Welcome back everyone. Today's lecture presentation is about online narratives. What is a narrative? A narrative is a story or account of events and experiences, whether true or fictitious. It is the process or technique of narrating. And basically, it's storytelling. The way stories are told varies depending on the medium through which the message is delivered. Print, television, radio, film, online media, and so on. Different media develop different narrative structures. There are intentional and unintentional narrative structures in online media. Some blog themes, such as personal diaries, lend themselves very well to intentional serial narrative structures, which we'll talk about in a bit. Even blogs without a specific narrative goal might be viewed as having some unintentional narrative structure when viewed as a whole. Jill Walker Redberg writes in her book Blogging that the most obvious difference between narrative in a blog and in other media is that the stories in blogs are told in brief episodes. Each post in a blog has a beginning and an end and can in principle be read on its own. Read together, the posts create a larger story. She continues, Blogging is an episodic style of writing that leads to particular kinds of narrative structure. Both diaries and earlier hypertext fiction are antecedents of this narrative structure. Famous diary narratives in history include authentic diaries by Anne Frank and Helen Keller and fictional diaries such as Flowers for Algernon, which was adapted into the movie Charlie, Bridget Jones's Diary, and Diary of a Wimpy Kid. In print, writers, editors, and publishers have experimented with non-linear game books, usually targeted at the children's market, with each story written from a second-person point of view, as the reader assumes the role of the protagonist and makes choices that determine the main character's actions and the plot's outcome. One of the most popular was the Choose Your Own Adventure book series from the 1980s and 1990s, selling over 250 million copies. Obviously, this had limitations based on the number of pages in the paperback books. Hypertext fiction is a literary form that began to develop in the late 1980s. Like a blog, it consists of many small pieces of narrative, called nodes or lexias, which are connected by links enabling non-linear storytelling to a much greater extent than the print equivalent, such as the Choose Your Own Adventure book series. These hypertext narratives were distributed via CD-ROMs or downloadable software and limited to the memory storage space on the discs. Some examples include Afternoon, a Story by Michael Joyce, Patchwork Girl by Shelley Jackson, and The Unknown by William Gillespie, Scott Redberg, and Dirk Stratton. Online narratives, and blogs in particular, highlight differences from narratives in other media. Unlike traditional diaries or early hypertext fiction, which we just looked at, blog readers cannot know when or even if a blog narrative will end. Even when a blog does end, questions are not necessarily resolved for the reader. Episodic narratives are particularly well suited to our style of reading on the internet. Users don't read on the web as they do in print materials. Instead, they scan and skim. But readers are spending more and more time with text on screens than any time in human history. We spend hours reading and moving between fragments. The most obvious difference between narrative in a blog and in a novel is that the stories in blogs are told in brief episodes. They're fragmented. Each post in a blog has a beginning and an end, and can, in principle, be read on its own. Read together, the posts create a larger story. Each blog post is far briefer than most episodes of serial fiction in other media, and there is not always a clear sense of continuity between posts, as there is in more traditional serials. Blog narratives tend to progress in real time, 
paralleling the reader experience of hours, days, weeks, months, and years. Some blogs do have a very clear dramatic narrative arc, as when a writer starts a blog with a defined project in mind. There is a goal that is clearly expressed when the blog is started, and the blog will end when or if the goal is achieved. Blogging as a literary form supports the idea of eventual success. We read with a certainty that there will be an end, and that when we have reached it, we will be able to look back and see the whole. As I mentioned before, each post makes sense in itself, but read together, the posts tell a larger story. Blogs act as mirrors. We create a reflection of ourselves through a weblog, and bloggers, intentionally or not, explore themselves through their writing. Blogs also act as veils. Blog writers do not tell all, but present only certain carefully selected aspects of themselves to their readers, even often using pseudonyms. Redberg writes that online writers simultaneously use their blogs as mirrors and as veils, exploring themselves, hiding parts of themselves, and looking through the veil to communicate with their readers, a flirtatious game of peekaboo, showing but not showing all. She continues, most blogging is to some extent self-representational, and as such, a form of life writing or autobiography, but sometimes blogs that are written as though they are authentic turn out to be fictional. Some fictional narratives and characters have been presented and interpreted as being real, such as the video log or vlog of Lonely Girl 15. Most of the fiction we encounter in other media is obvious. On the web, fiction is not always marked as such. Lonely Girl 15 debuted June 2006 to enormous popularity. It was revealed to be fictional on September 2006. Actress Jessica Rose wouldn't renew her contract so her character was killed off on August 2007. The video blog continued until August 1, 2008. A spin-off, LG15 The Resistance, ran until December 2008. There were contests to spin off the series, and those contest winners included LG15 The Last and LG15 Outbreak. There was a spin off in Poland called Nicola. The creators of Lonely Girl partnered with CBS for a series in Italy. They also partnered with Shinto Tushin for a series in Japan. It was a great example of the power of narrative storytelling through video blogs, but its popularity wasn't the same after it was revealed to be fake rather than the authentic blog diary of a 15-year-old girl. ABC's Nightline reported on the Lonely Girl 15 video blog hoax. Here's a link to see the segment. I'll also post the video on our discussion forum on Blackboard. Check it out when you have a chance. There have been other narrative hoaxes in other media, so it's not just an online phenomenon. On October 30, 1938, Many Americans believed Orson Welles' CBS radio broadcast adaptation of H.G. Wells's The War of the Worlds was reporting an actual alien invasion. Television has experimented with faux news narratives, such as NBC's Special Bulletin in 1983, HBO and CTV's Countdown to Looking Glass in 1984, and CBS's Without Warning in 1994. Print has seen its share of narrative hoaxes. A Million Little Pieces by James Free, an alleged nonfiction memoir, was selected by Oprah Winfrey for her popular book club, but it was revealed that many of the incidents written in the book were fabricated. When a narrative hoax is revealed or discovered, there's often a backlash. People feel tricked and sometimes betrayed. The emotional protection of knowing that something is make-believe isn't there for readers and viewers and participants who truly believe that the stories they experienced were real. Let's explore some elements of a good story. 
First, there should be a strong theme. What are you trying to say? What's the point? Everything in the story should fit the overall theme. It should have an engaging plot. How does the story unfold? Convey exposition in an interesting manner. In other words, show, don't tell. How do you reveal the conflict and the resolution? Are you building to a climax? Next, have a fitting structure. At the beginning, jump right into the action. Start your so-called scene as late as possible. At the end, wind up the story quickly. Leave the scene as early as possible. Choose first, second, or third person for your voice. Decide on the present, past, or maybe even future tense. String it all together to keep your audience's attention. These are all decisions to be made as you create a structure for your storytelling. Next, create relatable or recognizable characters, fictional or non-fictional, in the story you're telling. Is there a protagonist? Is there an antagonist? Are all the characters clearly defined? Make sure you have a well-defined setting. What is the place and time of your story? Provide sensory descriptions wherever possible. Finally, make sure you have an appropriate style and tone. Choose the language that is right for the story. Use strong words and phrases that elicit the desired emotional reaction that you want from your readers. Those are the key elements of a good story. A strong theme, an engaging plot, a fitting structure, relatable or recognizable characters, a well-defined setting, and an appropriate style and tone. Even if your blog is not primarily a narrative, Remember that there are narrative elements in all blogs, so remember those tips and tell good stories. See you next time.